This? No. Okay. Oh my god, it landed like perfectly on my oven. Woo! That was so awesome. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Alice. I go by Hello Alice here on YouTube and I make art videos. And today I wanted to sit down and share with you some art supplies that I personally don't think are worth the money. These are supplies that a lot of them aren't bad. I just think that you can get better supplies for around the same price. Um, there's one <laughs> there's one specific supply in here that I think is absolutely terrible. Um, the rest kind of range from eh, they're kind of bad to they're okay, but there's just a lot of better options out there, so I wouldn't really recommend them. But I thought it would be an interesting video for you guys to see the art supplies that I don't recommend and the ones that I, I don't think are worth the money. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you the supplies and I'm going to start with the one that I really, really hate. So the first supply I hate. Um, I think this art supply is terrible. I would not recommend that any of you purchase it. I think it sucks. And that is the Prismacolor Magic Rub Erasers. These are the like traditional white erasers that you see around. I actually don't have any with me. I used to have about three or four of them. Um, and I feel like loads of people use these and love them, but I think they're awful. They're actually not that expensive. Um, I was doing some research and you can get a packet of three for $2.99 on Target. So they're not expensive at all. That runs to that averages out to about 99 cents an eraser, but these things suck, okay? They smear your graphite everywhere, they make marks on your paper, they don't erase cleanly. Every time I tried to use them, it would just smear, and I expect more from Prismacolor, okay? Like, you think that you can trust them because they're a name that you've heard of and their pencils are great, but no, these erasers are shit. So the eraser that I would recommend instead is quite a bit more expensive, but I love these erasers. These are the Factice Black 18 erasers. These are definitely more expensive. I went on Amazon to buy them individually. They're like $7 each, which is ridiculous. But you can buy a set of six for $14.99, and that equals out to be $2.49 each, which I don't mind for an eraser, $2.49 each, because an eraser lasts for a really long time. These erase cleanly every single time. I've never had an issue with smearing or smudging with these erasers. But honestly, the eraser on this pencil from the Target dollar section is better than those shitty Prismacolor Magic Rub erasers. Thumbs down, they suck. Don't buy them unless you want a smeary graphite mess everywhere. Okay, so the next supply that I'm going to talk about is some watercolor pencils. So these are the Derwent watercolor pencils. These are pretty popular. Um, it's because I think they're very easily easy to find in stores. Most stores that I've been to carry them, including Michaels and Hobby Lobby. So they're really easily available for a lot of people. And they're not terrible. These were the first watercolor pencils that I ever bought. But they're not that great when you compare them to the alternatives that you can get as well. I'm going to insert some swatches right here of me comparing them to two other watercolor pencils. I'm going to be comparing them to the Arteza Woodless watercolor pencils and the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. As you can see when I'm trying to blend out the Derwent watercolor pencils it doesn't, they don't really melt away the way the other pencils do. You can see there's still a harsh line where I applied the pencil to the paper and that's really hard to blend out. You can also see they're not quite as pigmented as the others. They're pigmented, but they're not as pigmented. The biggest thing is the blendability. One of the most frustrating things in watercolor pencils can be when you can't blend out that texture of the pencil and that can be really, really frustrating for a lot of beginners and I find that these are very hard to blend out. So a 24 pack of the Derwent watercolor pencils runs for $21.42 on Amazon, which equals to about 89 cents a pencil. That's pretty affordable, especially if you consider the fact that you can buy them in Hobby Lobby and Michaels and use those 40% off coupons. So this still may be a good option for you. But if you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit better quality and around the same price, I would really recommend the Arteza Woodless Watercolor Pencils. I got these um, like last month and tried them out and I still really like them and use them a lot. These are $24.99 on Amazon or $1.04 a pencil and those are both for the 24 set so you're going to get the same amount. If you are looking for something that is a little bit higher quality and a little bit more expensive, um, I would recommend the Faber-Castell Albrecht Durer Watercolor Pencils. These 
are my favorite watercolor pencils of all time. They are beautiful. They are so pigmented, so smooth. They blend out amazingly. A 24 pack of these on Amazon is $37.65 or $1.56 a pencil. So definitely a higher price range than the Derwent or the Arteza, but a great option if you're looking for something that's just a step above. The next supply that I'm going to talk about is a brush pen. This is the Pigma FB Secura, Secura Pigma FB brush pen. Um, this is the fine brush pen. So you can get these on Amazon for $6.99 for a set of two or $3.49 each is what it equals out to. Um, so they're not that expensive. I mean, $3.49 for a pen, art pen isn't unusual. Um, and when I first got this pen, I really, really liked it. It was um, really fine and I could create a lot of really nice details. The problem with this pen is they don't last two weeks, you guys. Two weeks. I had this for two weeks and it started dying and the tip started fraying and I wasn't even using it that often. Like I was just sketching with it regularly. So I bought a second one and within the first like couple weeks, within the first month, the ink started dying and the tip started fraying. And I was just like, are you kidding? Like I expect a pen to last longer than a few weeks. Like I, what? What is this? So like, I don't know what it is or why they die so fast, but there are so many other brush pens out there that don't die within a few weeks that I wouldn't recommend you spend your money on this. Um, it would be a great pen if it lasted and if it didn't start fraying like crazy, but it does. So, wah, wah. The next supply that I'm gonna talk about is some watercolor paper, and you guys may have seen this before if you've been to an art store. It's the Strathmore watercolor paper. Um, this is the 400 series, and I'm going to specifically be talking about the 400 series in this video. I've used Strathmore watercolor paper for ages. I used to use the yellow stuff, which is the 300 series, and I think the 300 series is great for beginners. If you're a beginner, you just have access to a Michaels or a Hobby Lobby, they will have it, go get it, use a 40% off coupon, it's pretty cheap, it's great for a beginner. The 400 series is obviously more expensive because it's supposed to be better, but it isn't. It's not better. Um, I wish it was better, but it's not. It, it doesn't layer. Um, after, like, it, it really just doesn't layer well. Like, if you try to layer I, I, maybe, like, more than three layers on there, you start getting a lot of lifting. Um, and, of course, that can be due to your paint as well, but I've noticed it significantly more with this paper than with any other papers that I've used. The other thing, the thing that's really annoying is when it absorbs too much watercolor, when you try to paint on it, even if the paper is 100% bone dry, you get feathering. Like you cannot create a clean line. It's like the, the fibers of the paper have been damaged is what it looks like. And I struggled with this so much with the painting that I was trying to create and it ruined the painting. I, I couldn't finish the painting because I couldn't get a clean line. Um, not with masking fluid, not with anything because it the paper, the fibers got damaged from having multiple layers of watercolor paint, watercolor on. So if you're not the kind of artist that uses a lot of layers in your watercolor, then this paper might work fine for you. But I use a lot of layers. I use that to build depth and I, that's just how I work. And so it just, it doesn't work for me. The other thing that I noticed is that the watercolors tended to dry very flat and they almost had a mottled surface when they were layered heavily. So it started affecting the appearance of the watercolors as well. And I just wasn't a big fan of it, especially when there are other watercolor papers that you can get out there for the same price or even cheaper that are so much better. I feel like my voice is really scratchy. I like need some water right now. <sighs> okay. Oh, that's better. If you go on Amazon, you can get a 9 by 12 block um, of the Strathmore 400 series, um, and it comes with 12 sheets of paper for... Uh, the list price is $16.99 and that equals out to $1.41 a sheet. It is, at the time that I'm filming this video, on sale for $8.34, which equals out to $0.69 cents a sheet. However, you can get this on Amazon. This is the B watercolor paper in the cold press. So when I looked on Amazon, you can get their block of their 9x12 with 15 sheets of paper for $8.95 list price, which is $0.59 cents a sheet, and right now it's on sale for $7.25 or $0.48 cents a sheet. So it is still cheaper than the sale price of the Strathmore, and this stuff 
is awesome. I love this paper. It is 100% cotton, which is awesome. Um, 300 GSM or 140 pounds. It layers beautifully. It creates, it, it's just so pretty. It, it takes pa uh, paint so well. Um, it really makes your colors vibrant. It is a beautiful, beautiful paper. It is one of my top papers. It is so affordable. So yeah, uh, get this. Don't get that. Get this. It's, it's way better. <laughs> so the last two art supplies that I don't think are worth the money are watercolor paints. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is a travel kit. It has 12 colors and it is the Koi Watercolor Pocket Field Sketchbox. I know a lot of people love this and I gotta give them props. It's adorable. Okay, like, I mean, seriously, this is adorable. Look at it. It's so cute! It's like 12 little colors. Okay, white is useless in a watercolor palette and I don't know why people include it and just stop. Um, but it comes with a little sponge and a little water brush that like comes into. It's a really cute travel kit. But the paints kind of suck. I mean, they're not the worst paints in the world, but for the price, this is $30 and it did not have prime shipping, so and I did a little bit of a comparison swatch thing. The top colors that you can see are the Koi watercolors. And as you guys can see, or maybe you can see, I can see it in person, they're chalky and they're kind of opaque. Watercolor is supposed to be translucent. It's supposed to be like see-through, light is supposed to come through it. And I feel like you can even tell when you look at them in the pan that they're going to dry really chalky just because the actual pans themselves have no sheen to them. Um, they're very matte looking. And yeah, the paints are just, they dry opaque, they dry chalky, and they're not very pigmented. For $30, you can get a way better kit. That's going to be by Van Gogh. Van Gogh has a 12-pan pocket box for $24.05, and it is way better. Um, okay, it's not quite as adorable as this, but it is a travel kit. It does come with a brush, not a water brush, but a brush. Van Gogh is a great, great great beginner option for students. I love Van Gogh. It's, they're pigmented, they're translucent, they are great starter paints. They're not like artist quality, but their student quality is really, really good, and I would definitely buy those and not this. Sorry, you are not worth $30, even if you are adorable. The last one I am going to talk about, um, this is a really, really popular watercolors. Um, probably most people started with these watercolors. And they're not, they're not terrible, they're not. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Cotman watercolors by Windsor & Newton. Now, first of all, this is a Van Gogh kit. Okay, it says Van Gogh. Um, it also says Cotman up here because uh, my mom gave this to me. So this is a Van Gogh kit with Cotman watercolors inside. They're not, they're not bad. They're not. They're not bad. Um, they're affordable and they're easily available in stores. But they're just nowadays with Amazon and online ordering, there's just so many better options to be honest. They're relatively translucent. They're a little opaque, but they're nowhere near as opaque as the Koi ones. But they're just not that pigmented, um, especially when they dry. They, they're just very pastel. Again, I'll insert some swatches here. Um, so the top row is the Koi, like I said, then underneath is the Leningrad White Knights watercolors, and then under that is the Kiritaki Ganze Tambi watercolors, which are the ones I just tested out a few weeks ago. And then the bottom row is the Cotman, and you can see how much paler the Cotman is than all of the other colors. It's just not as pigmented or as bright, and they're, they're just better options. So the 24 pan set of the Cotman watercolors is $28.49 on Amazon. The Kiritaki Ganze Tambi watercolors that I tried out last week, which is this set, this is a 36 pan set and the pans are freaking huge. I think they're shallow, but there's definitely more paint in one of these than in one of these, like obviously. And it's 36 colors. This is $27.88, so this is actually cheaper than the Cotman. And as you can see in the swatches, they're just brighter and more pigmented, and I really did find them beautiful to work with. If you're looking for something that is only a little bit more expensive, but way, way higher in quality, I would highly recommend the Leningrad White Knights watercolors. This is the set that I have. Um, but the set that I'm going to be comparing to is the 24 pen set because I tried to keep the sizes about the same. But this is the set that I have. 
and these are the second swatches and you can see these are clearly the most bright and pigmented compared to all of them they just blow the rest out of the water you can get a 24 pen set of the Leningrad White Nights watercolors for $42 and these are artists quality archival super pigmented translucent beautiful easy to work with I would highly recommend you spend the extra $14 and buy the 24 pan set of the White Knights. Or if your budget really is you have to stay under 30, then the Kuretake again is gonna be way better than the common. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys and maybe gave you some insight into what supplies you maybe want to invest in if you're starting your watercolor or artist kit and which supplies maybe aren't worth the money. You guys can learn from my mistakes. Um, let me know down below what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you want to yell at me and call me names because I don't like your favorite art supply? Feel free to do all of the above, but please keep it family friendly. Um, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It does help me out. And if you are new to my channel and you would like to see more, then subscribe. Hit the notification bell that is somewhere up there to be notified every time I upload a new video. I do upload new videos every Friday and come join the Wonderland fam. We would be so happy to have you. And that is it for this video. I love you guys so much. I will see you next Friday. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. Bye guys! I have to leave for my mom's house in literally 8 minutes and I, I seriously feel like that video was such a mess. Like what did I even say? What did I even say in that video? I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs>